What is going on? Hazy Rome back here, PAX East 2017. We're here with a little game called Sundered. And by little game, I mean a baller ass game because I'm here to talk about it. So I'm here with William Dubay, the founder and creative director at Thunder Lotus Games. He's going to be talking about Sunder. Will, how's it going, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I'm enjoying the show. I played some Sunder a couple days ago. I was like, damn, I got to come back. And talk to you about this game, man. So tell me about Sundered, man. What's the inspiration behind it? So Sundered is a horrifying fight for survival and sanity. It's a replayable Metroidvania where you resist or embrace ancient eldritch powers. And it's coming to Steam and PS4 this July. Awesome, awesome. So uh, tell me about the combat of the game. For, you know what? Forget the combat. First, we're going to start with aesthetic. Because we can talk about combat, but I love the look of the game. Talk, talk to me about the aesthetic and the inspiration behind that. Uh, thank you very much. So. First of all, we're inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's writing, so, you know, madness, temptation, corruption, all those good things. Yeah. And then we're, we're merging it with, with Thunder Lotus's hand-drawn art style, so uh, 2D hand-drawn animation, hand-painted backgrounds, everything is, is hand-drawn in the game. So our first game, Joden, was a hand-drawn game where you fight Norse giants, and we're really happy to bring that into a different universe. Awesome, awesome. So now we can switch gears to the combat. Tell me about the combat, because while playing the game, I noticed that... Uh, one of the cool things is when you uh, encounter enemies and uh, bump into an enemy, you don't lose health or bounce back. There's kind of like a, another plane, like a, almost like a 2.5D plane where, uh, you know, you can kind of go through the enemies and still damage them. So tell us about how you developed the combat for Sundered. So the main inspiration for Sundered's combat was actually uh, Super Smash Brothers. Awesome. So we wanted to have something that was very fluid, yeah. you know, like combo based, but not like XXX square based. Like, more like these different moves you can do and kind of chain them together sure. and uh, have that work with the knockback on the monsters so they kind of stick to you and you can kind of like juggle with them and, and that was really the, the main inspiration for the combat. So is it melee, guns, how did you guys, uh, how do you guys find the balance between that? So it's mostly melee, uh, the basic attacks are melee, you do have a huge cannon yeah. that you can use with very limited ammo, it's very powerful and yeah. it has a huge amount of knockback, it pushes you back like yeah. several screens away which is Actually, you can break the game sometimes in some really <laughs> bizarre ways, but uh, we're still in alpha, so we're still working. Dev problems, games. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, about the about the combat, uh, are you able to upgrade that 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 cannon you have? Are you able to upgrade your abilities? How does that work? Uh, how can you? I know it's a Metro Metroidvania. Can you go back and find upgrades? Uh, are there is there a drop system? Yeah. So there's seven main core abilities in the game. And those are abilities that you find in the world and they allow you to traverse different obstacles, unlock new regions. Nice. Uh, and those abilities can be corrupted into more powerful eldritch versions. But that comes at a cost to your humanity. So that has impact on the story, on the gameplay, but also on uh, the ending of the game. What do you mean by corrupted and what do you mean by humanity? Because listen man, I like being human. And if you're gonna change me while I play this game, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Will talk to me about that. Well, you're going into the dark side, man. If you want, <laughs> if you want power, man, you gotta pay the price. <laughs> so yeah, when you beat when you beat a boss, when you beat mini bosses, you get elder shards, yeah. and then you can bring those elder shards back to the ability shrines where you got that. So for example, um, in this demo, um, I think you played with the hook shot. Yeah. So you got the hook shot. Well, when you have an elder shard, you can go back to the shrine, the hook shot shrine, and you can get the corrupted hook shot. So the is, shrines are like places uh, that you can, you know, revisit and and and, and upgrade your, your your weapons and whatnot and your uh, abilities your and stats. Abilities. Yeah, that's where you can corrupt your abilities. Uh, every time you die, you get back to the hub. You get the, the skill tree as well. You can put your you can spend points to get permanent upgrades to make yeah. your character more powerful as well. So two things I want to mention. First, talk to me about the skill tree because there's something unique you guys have in that each ability that you have, you kind of have to spend like uh, a certain set of points three times uh, in order to fully upgrade that ability. So can you tell me why you chose to, to do that as opposed to just, you know, pressing, you know, X or A and, uh, you know, upgrading to that ability, ability automatic, automatically instead of having to pay points three separate times? Yeah, that's actually... Uh something that's kind of given us trouble <laughs> because most people put one point in right. and then they try to go to the next node and that doesn't work so we're still in alpha we might like we have to make that much more clear yeah. like once you understand that you can put three points in and you need to put three points in to get to the next one it's okay people understand but it's just a way that we can kind of you know get that really good feeling of putting points in yeah. just kind of like without making a skill tree that is you know, the size of like Path of Exile or something, yeah, which yeah. can get kind of crazy. Sure. Or like Final Fantasy X yeah. was another one we were looking at. But yeah. uh, 
it's a way of, of, of kind of like of, of balancing and just being able to spend more points. I think part of the part of the confusion is that, in essence, you're spending points uh, on one point of the one right. one side of the triangle, right, right, um, right. and then you have to spend additional points to get the other side and additional points to get the third side to fully unlock the ability. So, I mean, I don't know if there's a tutorial for the game or anything like that in the beginning, but uh, how are you working through to explain that? What's uh, the current approach right now for the team and, and ironing that out? So that it's the same process whenever we have like a game design issue or like a user experience issue. We, sure. we, we, we put the game out there like we think makes sense and then people play it and then we realize that it didn't make sense to anyone except for us. <laughs> so then we have to change it and make it uh, clearer, more intuitive. Uh, but yeah, tutorials can help with that. But ideally, uh, like I said, we're selling alpha. We're gonna we're doing a full revamp on the skill tree anyway, so that hopefully will be fixed uh, for release. Awesome, awesome. So I want to ask you about uh, something that you mentioned earlier, um, and that when you die, you go to the altar. So when I was playing the game, you told me that you want us to die, okay? <laughs> and I want to put that out there because you want us to die while playing the game. Why is that? What? Did, why? Why did you guys decide to put that mechanic into the game? Well. Dying is is good because it's your way to progress. Speak right? for yourself, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, for your character, I mean, it kind of ties into the story. It makes sense. You're in this Lovecraftian world, these ever-changing caverns. Every time you die, we we reshuffle the world. The world is, is procedurally generated. So, we need to we need to away a condition to be able to reset the world to make that keep your experience fresh. Sure, sure. So that's part of it. And it really ties into the to the Lovecraftian themes, like I was saying, that 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 feeling of madness, of confusion, not really understanding what's going on, and, sure. and being trapped in this crazy world. So, what platforms are you planning on re releasing the game on? So, Sundered is coming to Steam and PS4 this July. Okay. All right. So, I was talking to you, and I hope you can give us some details about this because I was really interested in how the process of applying to get your game onto something like uh, PlayStation or, or Steam. I know Steam's a lot easier, but uh, what did you guys go through in order to do that? Yeah, you have to get approved as a developer uh, for, with Sony, uh, and then uh, you submit your game to them, and they, they have like a whole bunch of requirements and stuff that they check, and then they, they basically tell you, yeah, you're good, or, or no, come back with your next game or something, you know? What, got, what type of requirements are we talking about here? I don't really know exactly their exact requirements. You, yeah. You'd have to look up on the de developer, Sony developer website or something. So you basically just have to submit it and, and, and hope to God that, you know, you get in. Yeah, I mean, well, you can look at the games, the, the type of games they, they submit, right? Like, you yeah. know, kind of what they're looking for. You need, sure. So that can give you kind of an idea of what you need to need, where you need to be at in order to submit for, 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 for PS4. Have they given you a deadline as to when the game needs to come out or is that completely your... You know, your purpose. No, that, that's completely up to us. Yeah. Uh, they're great to work with uh, for that reason. But uh, no, we, we're, we basically have full full control. Awesome, awesome. So uh, are you planning on releasing it on any other platforms if possible? Maybe. Who knows what the future holds. But for now, we're focusing on Steam and PS4. So it's a little bit of a timed exclusi exclusivity thing on consoles. Yes. Okay. All right. So tell me about the team that you're working with. How long have you guys been working on the game? How big is your team? Uh, you know, once PAX East is over, you know, what are you guys going to do when you get back to the office? So we're Thunder Lotus Games. Uh, we found, founded the studio in uh, 2014. Sure. Uh, we did Jotun, uh, and then we released Jotun on Steam in September 2015, on consoles se September 2016. We started working on Sundered early 2016 in January. Sure. Uh, so yeah, it's been over a year now. Uh, we just got off of Kickstarter. Uh, with Sunder, it went great, and uh, we're we're gearing up for release. We're 11 people on the team right now, yeah. Uh, so we're a pretty big team, which allows us to go fast, basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we want to make beautifully powerful games, man. We want to. <laughs> that's what we want to do. I like epic things, so I want to make epic things. Awesome, awesome. So, in, in starting the game on Kickstarter, how much of the funds relative to what you need to finish the game did you get via Kickstarter? What were your goals? How much did you make? So for Sundered, we asked for twenty-five thousand, and we got over two hundred. Wow, that's awesome, man! Yes, thank you very much. No, it was an amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't about the money for us for Sundered. Uh, at that point, the, the, the game was fully funded already. Uh, it was really about getting people involved in the process, getting alpha backers, getting beta backers, getting feedback, and then the extra funds are to give us a little leeway so that we can actually implement that feedback. Sure. Uh, so we can have, add a little bit of extra dev time 
uh, to implement that feedback. Awesome, awesome. So you're working with a publisher for the game, or is it just you guys doing your own thing? No, we're self-published. Uh, we are working with Sony, obviously, uh, yeah. as, our, as our partner. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, we're, we're, we're self-publishing. Is there anything on the horizon for Thunder Lotus Games? Anything you're working on? What's, uh, what's the future hold for you guys? Hopefully, uh, great things. Uh, but yeah, no, knock on wood, but we're, we're super excited about Sundered. Um, you should be. Yeah, thank you. And uh, it's coming in July, so it's coming really, really soon. When we finish PAX, I'm actually off to South by Southwest. Wow, that's uh, awesome, man. So it's the Thunder Lotus World Tour uh, <laughs> continues. Uh, and then uh, we're, uh, the team is getting back home, and they got to work on the game, and we got to get this game out the door. So I got one last question I'm going to sneak in here. This is for the Vita fans out there. So when we see a game like Sunday, we're thinking, how come this game can't be on the Vita, man? It's just, you know, we think small indie game. We think, you know, something that has, like, you know, platforming. It's, you know, more or less 2D. Um, what, why is it on the Vita? I know it's not coming to the Vita, but can you tell us a little bit about that so that people can understand why not all games that, you know, are, you know, on the, on the, the indie, um, you know, smaller level in terms of, like, the world and the, the, the environment, why they're not on games like the, uh, why they're not on consoles like the Vita? So, Joden, uh, I can talk about Joden because Joden's finished. Sure. In, in the end, Joden had about 35,000 frames of animation, uh, which takes up a lot of memory. On sure. Steam, when we launched, the minimum requirements for RAM was uh, 4 gigs of RAM okay. on PC. And then when we did the, the, the console versions, uh, we brought that down a little bit because we had to do some optimization, especially for Wii U. Sure. Um, but the amount of optimization needed to do a Vita port, it would not be possible. Basically, the, the, the game would be running at like 20 by 30 resolution. <laughs> I mean, Vita fans are patient, man. We might be able to get by with that. You'd be playing with like one pixel like per monster, basically. <laughs> so it, it's just not possible technically at this point. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Good luck with Sundered. I'm definitely going to be picking up this game. Like, I'm not even going to front. This game is getting bought by Hazy Rome. And for anyone who's listening, they know I'm a cheap ass. So they know, you know, if I'm saying I'm going to buy a game, I'm going to buy a game. So I uh, wish you the best of luck with Sundered. Is there any way we can find out more information about the game? We can Maybe we can follow you and, uh, you know, talk to you about the game if possible. Yeah, definitely check out uh, Twitter, Facebook, Thunder Lotus Games, thunderlotusgames.com. We have a mailing list there that... We often do like alpha and beta key giveaways, stuff like that. Sure. Uh, Wishlist the game on Steam. Check it out on, on the PS4 uh, store as well. So. And it's coming, and you're aiming for July, right? July. All right, guys, check out Sundered July 2017. This is Hazy Rome. I'm getting on out of here. Will's getting out of here. Good luck at uh, 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 your next con, man, and uh, best of luck with the game. Uh, thank you so much. All right, guys, we're getting out of here. Peace out. Peace out.